What if one of the darkest chapters of human history was left unspoken, unwritten and largely unrecognised? This is what happened in the winter of 1937-38 during an event known as the Nanking Massacre or the Rape of Nanking. The city of Nanking was the capital of China and it was under siege by the Japanese Imperial Army. Over a period of six weeks, mass murder, rape and looting left hundreds of thousands of Chinese citizens dead, traumatized and dispossessed. This video aims to shed light on the unspeakable things that occurred during the Nanking Massacre. It seeks to provide an honest account, a sober reflection on the depths to which humanity can descend when left unchecked. Let us then journey through this dark tunnel of history, for only by acknowledging and understanding our past can we hope to build a more compassionate and peaceful future. Background Understanding the backdrop of the Nanking Massacre is pivotal for comprehending the full extent of the horrors inflicted during the period. Let's trace back to the growing ambitions of the Japanese Empire, which were notably manifested in the Sino-Japanese Wars. The First Sino-Japanese War (1894–1895) demonstrated Japan's burgeoning power as they sought to expand their influence, not only over the Korean Peninsula but also in the larger Asian context. This led to territorial annexations and rising tensions within China. Furthering their imperialistic ambitions, Japan launched the Second Sino-Japanese War in 1937, exploiting the political turmoil in China, divided by civil war between nationalists and communists. The Battle of Shanghai that started in August 1937 marked a significant escalation of the war. However, it was also a taxing victory for Japan, with a heavy toll on their troops. This frustration fueled the following onslaught on Nanking. International politics of the 1930s also played a crucial role. The League of Nations, formed to maintain global peace, failed to check Japan's aggressive imperialism. Western powers grappling with the Great Depression and the looming threat of Nazism in Europe were unable to exert significant influence. Moreover, Japan's withdrawal from the League of Nations in 1933 signified a global power shift and the ineffective international diplomacy of the time. This series of events leading up to the Nanking event further offers evidence of the rising tensions. After a brutal three-month battle in Shanghai, Japanese forces moved towards Nanking. With the infamous order from Prince Yasuhiko Asaka, kill all captives. Thus, the stage was set for what was to become one of the most horrific instances of mass violence in human history. The Nanking Event – Unfolding of the Atrocities on December 13, 1937, the Siege of Nanking commenced, making the onset of a six-week period that would scar the annals of human history with unthinkable atrocities. The Japanese Imperial Army, having seized control of the city, began an unchecked reign of terror that would leave permanent marks on Nanking and its inhabitants. Eyewitness accounts from survivors and foreign nationals living in Nanking at the time offered chilling insights into the horror that unfolded. Among these accounts, John Rabe, a German businessman and Minnie Voltrin, an American missionary, stand out. Rabe's detailed diary entries and Voltrin's relentless efforts to protect women and children in the Nanking safety zone shed light on the severity of the situation. Their writings spoke of arbitrary executions, rampant looting and mass rape. They depicted a city in chaos, lawless and helpless under the brutal occupation of the Japanese army. The Massacre, Scale and Severity The sheer scale and intensity of the Nanking Massacre stand as one of the most horrifying aspects of this event. What unfolded in those six weeks was a tragedy of staggering proportions, a chilling testament to the ruthlessness of the invading forces. Historians estimate that between 200 and 300,000 Chinese citizens lost their lives during this period. However, the inhumanity of the massacre was not just about the scale. It was also about the brutality. Men, women and children were systematically exterminated in large numbers, often in public executions conducted with explicit displays of cruelty. Soldiers of the defeated Chinese army, who were supposed to be treated as prisoners of war under international law, were instead subjected to mass executions, often via barbaric methods such as live burials, mutilation and death by bayonets. 
The severity of these actions was further exacerbated by the indiscriminate nature of the killings. The elderly, children and women were not spared, with many accounts of entire families being wiped out. A sad reminder of the human tendency for brutality during conflict. This massive and horrific massacre left a lasting imprint on humanity. Sexual violence, systematic and widespread rape. Another deeply horrifying and unspeakable aspect of the Nanking Massacre was the systematic and widespread sexual violence inflicted upon the women of Nanking. This tragedy was so extensive that it led to the event also being referred to as the Rape of Nanking. Historians estimate that between 20 to 80,000 women were sexually assaulted during a six-week period. However, the numbers alone do not adequately convey the horrific nature of these crimes. The assaults were not restricted by age or social status. Women of all ages, from young girls to elderly women, were victims. The violence was often accompanied by extreme brutality, with many survivors reporting torture and mutilation accompanying the sexual assault. Accounts from individuals such as Minnie Vautrin and other members of the Nanking Safety Zone Committee provide harrowing details. They document the relentless efforts of the Japanese soldiers to abduct women and girls from the safety zone for their pleasure, and the desperate measures the committee took to protect them, such as disguising them as elderly women. The use of sexual violence as a weapon of war in Nanking was not merely incidental, but appeared to be a part of a larger, organized effort to demoralize and degrade the Chinese people. Inflicted Starvation and Deprivation on Civilians the unchecked starvation and deprivation inflicted upon the civilians of Nanking is another chilling aspect of the horrifying cruelty committed during this period. With the Japanese army's control over the city and its resources, a form of collective punishment was imprisoned that punished the city into a desperate struggle for survival. The Japanese forces seized food supplies and disrupted the distribution networks, leading to widespread hunger among the civilian population. Lack of access to clean water and sanitation facilities further worsened the conditions, leading to outbreaks of diseases like cholera and dysentery, compounding the misery of the city's inhabitants. Starvation became a weapon of war used to demoralize and control the civilian population. Eyewitness accounts from members of the Nanking Safety Zone describe the scenes of desperation. Rations were scarce and queues for food were long with many resorting to eating leaves or tree bark out of sheer desperation. According to Iris Chang's The Rape of Nanking, an estimated 50 to 60,000 refugees flooded into the safety zone at the height of the siege, exacerbating the food scarcity. The international starvation and deprivation of civilians, a violation of the basic principles of human rights and international law, contributed significantly to the unspeakable horror of the Nanking Massacre forced labor and human rights violations. The widespread use of forced labor and open violation of human rights add another dark layer to this atrocity. Forced labor, another weapon employed by the Japanese forces, stripped the people of Nanking of their dignity, freedom, and often their lives. Civilians, including those who sought refuge within the Nanking safety zone, were often forcibly taken by Japanese soldiers to labor camps where they were made to work under harsh conditions. These men and women were used for strenuous physical labor with little to no food and rest, often leading to exhaustion and death. Testimonies from survivors and documents from the International Military Tribunal for the Far East revealed that many were used as human shields for the Japanese forces against Chinese snipers. Such as instances underscore the disregard for basic human rights and the value of human life. Similarly, documented accounts also show that thousands were forced to clear bodies from the massacre site and bury them in mass graves, a psychologically traumatizing task. These violations of human rights, forced labor, exploitation, and dehumanization were not side effects, but systematic elements of the occupation, contributing to the nightmarish reality of the Nanking Massacre. Use of Unlawful Weapons Moving on, it's also important to address the illegal and gruesome use of biological and chemical warfare by the Japanese forces, which demonstrates a disregard for international law and human life. Evidence suggests that the deployment of chemical weapons during the siege, violating the 1925 Geneva Protocol, prohibiting the use of chemical and biological warfare. Witnesses reported Japanese soldiers throwing gas bombs, leading to horrific injuries and deaths among both soldiers and civilians. Furthermore, 
Unit 731, a covert biological and chemical warfare research and development unit of the Imperial Japanese Army, is believed to have tested biological weapons in Nanking. Although no direct evidence links Unit 731 to Nanking, there were accounts of mysterious outbreaks of plague and cholera following the massacre, suggesting potential biological warfare. Although the use of these unlawful weapons in Nanking is less well documented, compared to other atrocities, the very possibility adds a chilling dimension to the catalogue of horrors associated with the massacre. The Nanking event in historical memory Examining the Nanking massacre's role in historical memory is just as important as we navigate through its depths. Denial, revisionism, and much debate have surrounded the incident, particularly in Japan. Some conservative factions have sought to downplay or even deny the atrocities committed, further exacerbating the wounds inflicted. However, the global community, backed by extensive historical evidence, continues to recognize and condemn the horrors of Nanking. Efforts to remember Nanking have led to several memorials and commemorations, the most notable being the Nanjing Massacre Memorial Hall in China. When morality and control are removed, the horrible atrocities such as the Nanking Massacre expose the most sinister aspects of human nature. From Nanking, we learn the essential lesson that forgetting history risks repeating itself. Let Nanking be a reminder, a lesson, and a call to action. We hope to see you again in the next video.